Welcome to my channel, my name is Felicia and today I'm going to walk you through how I develop film at home. First off, I'm going to show you some of the materials you'll need. I'm not going to list them all off verbally just for the sake of the length of this video, but everything will be listed in the description box down below with links for your convenience. I do want to mention if you buy stainless steel reels, try and get the one that looks like this on the left where the hook spikes are a little bit more rounded rather than the one on the right. The reel on the right is straight up disrespectful, ate my film, waste of money, do not recommend. I'm also doing the sous vide method. If you don't have a sous vide, that's okay. When I first started, I used a stainless steel pot with some boiling water and if my temp drop, I'd just add more boiling water to the pot. Developing film seems intense and precise, but in reality, there's a lot of wiggle room, so I wouldn't stress too much about temp regulation. I chose a lot of glass and stainless steel because I thought it would last a bit longer, and it looked cute, but there are a few problems. The film tank I have does leak, and the glass jars are a bit awkward to hold and pour with, so opting for plastic might be more ideal for you. With chemical storage though, you do want to be mindful that your bottles are dark so your chemicals don't degrade from the outside light over time. Okay, so first thing you'll want to do is prep your darkroom bag. This bag prevents light from exposing your film while you load it onto your reel. Try not to forget anything, make sure you have your reels, film keys, scissors, film rolls, and developing tank all ready to go. These bags usually have two forms of closures, a zipper and a velcro flap to prevent light from coming in. It will also have two armholes that are double lined on the opposite side. Alright, now we're on to the fun part, which is loading your reels in the dark. All this is being done secured in the darkroom bag. We're going to pretend that my hands are in the bag so I can show you what I'm doing. I'm going to take my film key and pop off the top to let the film out and unwind. This film flap needs to be cut off, so I kind of feel for the curve with my finger and cut along the edge without cutting off my finger. With my right hand, I'm gonna slightly bend my film so it lays flat. You don't wanna crease your film, just a slight bend. With the other hand, I'm gonna feel inside the reel and make sure the hooks inside are on top and pointed left. And with my right hand, I'm gonna just hook the film on and guide it slowly around. Your film shouldn't feel like it's crinkling or making loud noises. It should travel around the reel with ease. When you're done, put it in the film tank and secure with the lid. And yes, I did waste a full roll of film for this video, but it also might be helpful for you two as well to practice loading your reel before wasting film you took pictures with. mix my chemistry kit. If you're developing black and white, your instructions and chemicals will differ from this. I shoot in color, so I need a C41 kit. Please read through your instructions carefully. Do not use this video as a replacement for that. The chemicals provided just so happen to equal a quart without having to measure anything. And my storage bottles also hold a full quart, so that's why I picked this measurement. I like to start by mixing developer just because if you get a drop of Blix in your developer, you can ruin the whole bottle, which doesn't sound fun. So just to be safe from contamination, I mix that one first. Also make sure you're using distilled water for the same reasons. You don't want to risk contamination with that either. There's a part in the instructions that says the water needs to be a certain temperature. I wouldn't stress too much about that. They state that so it will take less time to heat up while developing and that's it. If you're using a funnel, make sure to clean it in between chemical mixtures. The second chemical I mix is the Blix and the last one I mix is the stabilizer. Here is the sous vide I'm using. Your machine will tell you how full to fill up your container, so that's what I'm doing right now. To speed up the process, I am using warm water. Tap water is fine. This isn't going to touch any of your chemicals. It's just a double boiler method. I left the stabilizer at room temperature. You only need to heat up the developer and blix. I'm doing the chart instructions for 102 degrees. 
Don't just use the thermometer on the sous vide itself, you'll need a second thermometer to measure the chemistry temp inside the bottle. It's time to pour our developer. The sides of the container will be warm, that's how I know it's filled all the way. Read your instructions carefully. My kit states to develop for three and a half minutes at 102 degrees, and every 30 seconds do four inversion cycles. An inversion cycle is just turning it upside down like this and then back over. I highly suggest doing this over a sink. I found out my tank leaks a lot during this process. When that's done, you can pour out your developer back into its container. Processing Blix is the same as developer, but you're going to do this for 8 minutes instead. If you're not reusing your chemicals, make sure to check with your local waste management about proper disposal of the chemistry. If you have a septic tank, I heard you can damage your pump by putting these down the drain, so just dispose responsibly if you can. There are special instructions on how to chemical reuse, so I would read those if I were you. For washout, you can safely remove your lid and remove the chemicals and just let the water run for three minutes. The last step is stabilizer for one minute and that's about it. This part is always the most nerve-wracking experience, seeing if there's even any images developed, and thankfully there is! This is a little drying rack I made out of scrap wood, and these binder clips are super handy for drying film. I use a clip at the bottom to weigh the film down and straighten it as it's drying as well. Last thing that's optional is squeegeeing. The last time I opted not to do this, I ended up having watermarks all over my film, which was not the vibe. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me, and I'll see you in the next video.